In this Groove workshop, I'll show you how easy it is to connect your Groove directly to an E1 brain. Using Groove, you can monitor and control your digital G1 or G4 modules with virtually any mobile device or modern browser. Here's what you'll need. Groove 2.3 or better, which includes Modbus support, an E1 brain on the same network, and the IP address or host name of that E1 brain. And that's it. Since Groove 2.3 or newer is a Modbus TCP master, we can communicate directly to an E1, which is a Modbus TCP slave device. I'll configure all 16 points on this rack in one tag, an array of booleans or coils as they're called in Modbus. Then I'll add gadgets for the first four points, two outputs and two inputs. Let's get started. Here in Groove Build, to configure the connection to my Modbus device, I click Configure Devices and Tags, Modbus Device, give my E1 a name, and type its host name. The defaults are fine for the slave ID and port. Next, click Access Config and check these Modbus protocol settings. We have yes, 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 and then no and no. Since the Modbus standard is interpreted by device manufacturers in a variety of non-standard ways, we provide lots of options here, so Groove can connect to just about any Modbus TCP device. Click Add Device. Now, to connect to the points on the E1 device, click Configure Tags. Click on this Add New Tags. I'll type in a name here. I'm going to be using coils, so I'll call it coils. You can use a more descriptive name for yours. These are Boolean, just on off. A coil array is quick and easy and does read write, so this one tag can work for all 16 modules on the rack. I selected base one addressing earlier, so I'll start with one, and I have 16 points, one per array element. Click save, close, close again. Now that my array of tags is configured, I'm ready to drag and drop gadgets onto my page. I'll create a button to control what's connected to that first black AC output. I'll select that button's tag from the array which we just created. The first one is index zero. I'll adjust the size of that button a little. Then I can just right click and duplicate from my very similar second point. I'll just change the label. You'll want to use something more descriptive here. Then the array index, and let's change the true color. My next two points are inputs, so I'll use an LED gadget to see the signal coming into the rack. I'll connect it to element two, make it yellow like the module, then right click to duplicate again. I change that label, array index, and make it white like the module. Also, don't forget, the handheld version of the page was built for me. I can just arrange or stash the gadgets how I want for my mobile devices. Maybe adjust these sizes here. That's looking better. Let's try this out. Select Save All Changes and switch to Groove View. I'll try out these buttons here. Looking good. Then I'll flip an input switch here on this yellow module with a manual switch on it. It comes on, too cool. And here's how it looks on my iPhone. I can control the world from right here on my smartphone, even using G4 modules. So in just a few minutes, I've created a custom mobile interface and web page to control this E1 with G4IO. For more mobile options, check out Form 2126. And for more information on using Modbus and Groove, for example with your E2 brain, see Form 1576. As always, you can find more videos on Groove.com. Thanks for watching.